What is up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with a very special episode of the YouTube Pro Cycling team because today we get the Tour de France underway. And of course, we're just coming off the national championships. Benji and Blackwall did very well. We've got quite a few jerseys in the bag. Uh, so hopefully we'll see some on show in the tour. And so I think it's important to look at the sponsor objectives ahead of the Tour de France because we haven't actually succeeded in any of our main five objectives to this point so far this season. We didn't get a top 10 at the Tour of Flanders, no top five at the Giro, although we were unlucky, and no top five at Tirreno. So we do need to get at least a few stage wins at the Tour de France. And our sponsor confidence isn't too bad. We'd like to get it into that green zone. Um, if we rank the objectives by importance, you can see, as I mentioned, we haven't achieved any of our top objectives. We did get quite a few of the lower importance objectives, though, such as LBL, Milan, San Remo. So that's why our sponsor confidence isn't too bad. It would be great to boost it into the green after the Tour de France, though. OK, then, before taking a look at our squad for the race, let's take a closer look at the parkours and the course coming up for this year's Tour de France. So you can see three and a half thousand kilometers in total, plenty of varying stages. And that starts with a three kilometer prologue. Um, of course, very short, no real gaps to be made on this one. However, stage two, probably one for the sprinters, despite there being some climbing involved. I can see this being a mass sprint. Stage three comes around and this has the potential to be a big day for the GT guys in the first week of this race. Plenty of climbing, 3,800 meters in total very early in the race. Stage four and another break for the GT guys. Again, I expect this to go to a mass sprint and stage five, a very flat one. Pretty certain to be a sprint here as well. Stage six, and we do have one major climb, a first category climb, um, and then downhill to the line. So maybe a reduced sprint, but I can't see any gaps being made in the GC today. Stage seven and some crazy final climbs. Look at this final climb, average of six and a half percent over 17 kilometers after 255 kilometers in the saddle. What a stage that is. Stage eight, plenty more climbs again. Some difficult stages back to back for the GC guys. And that's followed with a flatter stage. There are some short hills, uh, but probably a mass sprint again. Stage 10 and more of a hilly stage, although the final climb quite long at 7.2k and pretty steep as well. Stage 11, again, maybe a mass sprint in this one. Uh, there are some hills towards the beginning, but one of the flatter stages in the race. Stage 12, though, and we go up Mont Ventoux, pretty much flat all day until the final mountain, 21 kilometers, average of 7.7%. Stage 13, and we do have the second TT of the race, and 39 kilometers certainly could make a big difference in the GC. On to stage 14, into the final week of the race, and we're going to Belgium briefly uh, for the Murder Hoy, of course, the climb that uh, La Fleche Valone finishes on. Some very, very steep short hills in this one. Stage 15, though, back to the mass sprint, I would say, despite some short hills again. Stage 16, and we do have one final climb, definitely one for the punchers, I would say. Stage 17, and again, a flatter stage. Uh, there are quite a few stages, I think, that suit the mass sprinters in this tour, but certainly not stage 18. 210 kilometers and five and a half thousand meters of climbing. An insane day in the GC. Stage 19, plenty more climbing again, this time with a downhill finish. Stage 20 and one of the queen stages of the race. Again, five and a half thousand meters of climbing, a very long stage as well, before finishing on Champs Elysees. However, not the usual mass sprints because we have a 29 kilometer TT coming into Paris. So, leading our GC charge at this Tour de France, we do have TJ Van Garderen and Patrick Comrades, two kind of joint leaders. It's going to be interesting to see how these guys do. Uh, I'm not really sure who's going to be the out and out leader at this point. Uh, so we go in with two joint leaders. They're both in very good form before the race though. Uh, so we'll see how this plays out. And leading our sprint team is the Colombian Sebastian Milano. He's had a very good season so far. 
Um, as we know, there's not too many stages suited to him, uh, but hopefully we can get some good results and maybe a stage win. And then really we have a bunch of Baradeurs and Domestiques. We have Edvald Bersenhagen and Luis Leon Sanchez. Two Baradeurs, I would say. EBH is also going to be a lead out man uh, for Sebastian Milano. Uh, but these two guys really are going to be trying to stage hunt in the breakaways. We then have Stefan de Bod, who's proved to be a pretty good climber so far this season. Tobias Foss, who of course won the Tour Down Under. He's proven to be a very, very good rider for the YouTube Pro Cycling team. So he has a place at the Tour de France. And then the final man in the squad is Frenchman Benjamin Thomas. He's going to be a good man for the TTs. And of course, he's going to be a lead out man for Sebastian Milano. And so then let's kick off the Tour de France with a three kilometer prologue really um, in Ajaccio, I think you say. And you can see the favorites today, Roglic, Wout van Aert, Schachmann, some very good riders here, of course. And we have a few good TTers with the likes of Van Garderen, Tobias Foss and a few others. So hopefully we can put in a decent little performance. So before kicking things off, I do want to take a quick look at the start list for this year's tour. And you can see Julian Alaphilippe leads quick step. We've got Van Aert, Kreuzvik, Roglic for Jumbo Visma. Vogelsang is here. We've got Sagan and Emmanuel Bookman, as well as Maxi Schackman, to be fair. Good team for Bora. We've got Gilbert de Ghent, Caleb Ewan for Lotto. Pollitt is here. Trek with a very strong team, the likes of Sturven, Ciccone, Mollema, Nibali, Ports. Such a strong team for Trek Segafredo. We have Tade Pogacar. Interesting to see how the youngster will get on with a strong start list at this race. With Team Ineos led by the two Brits, Garrett Thomas and Chris Froome. That means no Egan Bernal and no Richard Carapaz for Ineos in an almost full British squad. Thibaut Pino looking for his first win at a Grand Tour for FDJ. We have Mikhail Lander likewise for Bahrain McLaren. GVA is here, Adam Yates, who will lead Mitchelton Scott. We've got the likes of Betio and Higita as well. Emric Mass maybe in the GC leading Movistar. But you can see the rest of the guys. A very strong start list as you'd expect. So I think this has to go down as maybe the shortest stage in Tour de France history. I'm not sure. Anyhow, TJ is literally second off the start ramp today and you can already see a very nice plus three day for TJ Van Garderen. We should go into the lead comfortably ahead of this guy with 57 prologue. Try and go 99 the whole way. I think that should be fine with Van Garderen. I think the other guy about to cross the line right now, he goes three minutes 59 and TJ Van Garderen, a few hundred meters left, push it to the line TJ and he goes 10 seconds clear. So next off the start ramp for our team is Benjamin Toma um, and a very nice day for him as well, up to 77 prologue. So hopefully he can get a very good result as well. Burning his yellow very quickly here though, for some reason, uh, let's drop him to 85. You can see burning yellow very quickly compared to Van Garderen. Not quite sure why that is to be fair. Uh, let's try and push him up to 95 right now into the finish up to 99 now. Benjamin Toma pushing it into the finish line and he goes 10th. So currently on course, one of the big favorites for this race, in my opinion, Primoz Roglic, 80 prologue. He's probably going to take the lead as well of this TT. And he does one second clear of Richie Port. Of course, the time gap is going to be very close in this one, but you can see what I mean. Milano using his yellow so much quicker than TJ. I know he can't really TT compared to TJ, so it doesn't really matter. Um, just a bit strange, I think. So Sebastian Milano across the line in 13th place. Okay, so a very good TT for Sebastian Milano. Only a second behind Van Garderen there. So next up, we do have Norwegian champion Tobias Foss, of course. That is Black Wars doing from one of his previous episodes. Again, Foss, a much better time trialist. He's coping much better with yellow like TJ. Hopefully we can put in a very good TT despite a zero race, uh, zero race day condition on Tobias Foss. Coming across the line and he goes 11th place. Okay, so next up for the UG Pro Cycling team, Stefan de Bods, where can the South African go across the line into 81st, but just eight seconds down. So here we have Chris Froome in his opening prologue 
and looking at his attributes, he hasn't recovered well from that injury, obviously just before the Dauphiné last season. I guess they'll be going for Garrett Thomas at this race. Despite that though, 13th place for Froome. Okay then, this is what I'm talking about. Eddie Bersenhagen on a plus four day and you can see his prologue very nice today, up to 82 I do believe. Let's see what we can do. He's burning through his yellow quite quickly. Let's drop this to 95. Uh, on a short downhill section, down to 84, up to 90. Can we go like this to the line? Maybe 95. Come on, Eddie. Can we maybe challenge for the stage right here? I think we went too early and we're down in 24th. So next up, we do have another one of the big pre-race favourites, I would say. Emmanuel Bookman crossing the line. Where does the German go? 13th, three seconds down. Decent time for him. We have Lawrence De Plus on course right now. Ballerini, Bargui, and then Patrick Conrad. So here is our Austrian, Patrick Conrad, about to get underway. He does get a zero. Would have liked a bit of a better race day condition. He's burning his yellow quite quickly again. So we'll drop this maybe to 88 or 90. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretending I know what I'm doing in this really short TT. No idea what effort I should be going at. Let's try and up this maybe to 93. Burning it a bit quickly down to 90. 99 across the line and Patrick Conrad five seconds down. So it'll be interesting to see how Adam Yates can do at this race. Up to 79 mountains, some very good resistance. He is a decent little rider, the Brits, these days for Mitchelton Scott across the line. And he is 77th. Not a good prologue by Adam Yates. Further back, we have Mikael Lander. Of course, Freelander will see what he can do in this opening prologue. Only 67 prologue. Expected to lose time today. Let's see how he does across the line. Five seconds down. Here comes the Frenchman, Thibaut Pinot. He's a decent time trialer these days and he does go 30 seconds. And following him is the Brit, Garrett Thomas, looking for his second yellow jersey. And he crosses the line in first place, knocking off Primoz Roglic. Next up then, Tade Pogacar, of course, the leader for UAE. And he goes third place. What a time for Pogacar, taking some time trialing lessons, clearly, with Primoz Roglic. Not expecting anything from Sturven. Pollitt behind. He is a good time trialist. Uh, and behind him is Gilbert. We'll see where Pollitt goes. And across the line, Nils Pollitt goes 83rd. So I do believe the final three or four riders are now on course. Peter Sagan goes seventh place. What a prologue by Peter Sagan. Jakob Fuglsang up next for Astana. And the Dane goes 85th. Not a good TT. Woot Van Aert now challenging for the stage victory and he goes seventh, three seconds down. Garrett Thomas holding on for now. And finally, Julian Alaphilippe. Can he beat Garrett Thomas? He goes 13th. Garrett Thomas wins the opening stage of the Tour de France. So despite its short length, I did enjoy that opening stage of the Tour. Garrett Thomas clearly in fantastic form at this race, beating Roglic in a TT. Regarding our boys Van Garderen, only losing four seconds, of course, no real gaps to be made on this stage, uh, so nothing really to worry about. All right then, on to stage two, and I believe this is where the Tour de France really will get underway. You can see it is a flat stage despite quite a few hills earlier on, a 13 kilometer climb and definitely a chance to drop some of the sprinters potentially, and that means Philippe, Sagan and Van Aert are the favorites today. Stage two getting underway. You can see EBH looking very nice in that Norwegian jersey. Um, and I do want to go in the break today. Um, I was planning on going with Sanchez. He is uh, feeling a bit ill, but he is on a good day, it seems, a plus one. So I think we'll proceed with him in the break. So Sanchez coming towards the front and just 12k to go to that first KOM. Let's try and attack away right here. We do have one or two guys following us already. I did think about going with EBH as well, and I may try and follow with him in a second. Let's see. Here we come then into the first mountain sprint of this Tour de France. Like I said, just one point available, but we'll try and get into that polka dot jersey by the end of this stage. We're leading things out on the front. As it seems, Kevin Inkler trying to come past us. I'll sit in his wheel for the moment. It's about to get even steeper. I'm pretty sure he has gone way too early on this climb, 700 meters. Now time to try and attack him with Sanchez. And we seem too strong. Ventoso coming late, but Sanchez will take that single point. 
So we're just coming towards the top of this climb and we do have five mountain points available. So pretty important right here. Let's try and move to the front of this group with Sanchez as Incola again, leading things out from the front or at least trying to into the final kilometer right now. I think we can go a bit earlier this time with Sanchez. Incola tries to switch things up and follow us, but I think we're gonna take these with relative ease. Although, oh my word, I spoke too early. How did he take those points? Right, so Hananen, 64 sprint, 68 acceleration. He bombed past us like he was Peter Sagan right there. Oh my word. Anyhow, despite that catastrophe at the top of that climb, everyone's staying in the peloton fine for now in our team. Although we do have one rider struggling out the back, Luke Rowe, he's about to come back on. All right, so we are now approaching this intermediate sprint and I do need to be careful because it is coming after an uphill section. And I do want to challenge in the peloton with Milano and Toma. And you can see a small gap between these two groups right now. They're not giving this break any chance at all today. Uh, so let's try and take these points in both of these groups if possible. Uh, you can see the pace really being up now in uh, the breakaway. Let's come to the front with Toma and Milano. It's far from ideal. Don't think I'm managing this at all well right now. Uh, so Sanchez, I think we can maybe sprint with 1.5k to go. Where is Milano? He's way too far back. I don't think we're gonna be able to take any points with Sebastian Milano. Let's just take position. Sanchez, challenging for those points. I think we just about got them in the end. It was very, very close. Uh, Hananen again beating us in that sprint. Uh, and yeah, we're not gonna challenge. Weren't in a good enough position at all. Let's save our energy for the finish. So I know I've mentioned it in the prologue, but the effort put into these stages by Emmy is incredible. Honestly, if you guys get the chance, you should definitely try and rise some of his races. So pace in the peloton, pretty high right now. They're definitely not giving the break any leeway today. Anyhow, 2.5K to go to this next KOM sprint. I do want to move up a little bit with Sanchez. Let's do that right now. Incola on our left, still 2K to go, and it is quite steep to the line, but I think we're in a very good position right now. Incola, I'm expecting to try and attack past us. Here he comes, Hananen on his wheel. I think we can just go 99. I'm not going to follow him. I think we're in a pretty decent position. Can we hold this to the line though? It's going to be pretty difficult, I think. Let's try and sprint right now with Sanchez over the top of this climb. And we just about hold off Hananen on this occasion. And we're both on six points. So as we approach the final categorized climb on today's stage, it's going to be a showdown between Hananen and Sanchez to get into that polka dot jersey. At the moment, we're both on six points and whoever takes this climb will wear it in stage three. Right, this is the moment. 3K to go, just one point on offer, but it is a very important point. As we know, two and a half K to go. I'm gonna up this to 84 with Sanchez. Try and stay right on the front. Um, it is Manzin on the front for Total. He is now upping the tempo. I'm going to go 90, try and go my own tempo. Maybe follow him. Briefly, we'll follow him right now into the final kilometer of this climb, but we're in a very good position. Can we try and attack right now with 700 meters to go? Maybe I've gone too early. Here comes Hananen going for that point. Can we hold it? Oh my word, it is close, but Sanchez just strong enough. We will wear the polka dot jersey in the next stage. And back in the peloton, a few of our guys really struggling. You can see Stefan de Bod completely done at this point, it would seem. Let's just try and cling on at the back right here for a moment. We can maybe stick comrades on Van Garderen's wheel. Uh, but yeah, they're setting a very high tempo and a few guys have been caught behind. So I have just had a quick look and we do have Dainese and Bowl behind, probably the two best sprinters in these groups behind. As we have a very big moment because Tobias Foss and comrades have both fallen, just three riders down, Caleb Ewan down as well. Okay, we need to react very well to this. Foss and comrade now in this group behind. Lotto Suzao will try and wait, I assume. So let's just let them do the work. So these groups just about to join back up and you can see comrades just getting back in to the peloton right here. It's very close. Apparently there is still a gap. Let's take position, not force it. Let the other teams do the job. We don't want to do the pulling with Patrick Comrades. And there you go, we are now back in this group officially. Take position to the front. And you can see Debord, Thomas, and Foss really struggling. Okay, so Julian Alaphilippe 
has been caught behind right now for quick step. What a big moment this could be. And you can see UAE absolutely laying the hammer down, uh, trying to keep Julian and Philippe behind. This could be a very big moment in this Tour de France. I've just put Conrad and Van Garderen, I think, on Fuglsang's wheel as Thomas is now done. He can move over, let Sanchez do a bit of pacing, but we're just trying to stay towards the front for now. So we now have Dainese and Laporte still behind, Bowles still behind, Cavagna, McNulty, a few strong riders, and Alaphilippe. Alaphilippe's gone, you know, he's not coming back on right now. Let's move up with Sanchez, use our energy gels. It's now time to think about the sprints. Milano and EBH getting blocked somewhat. It's not ideal. And a quick step of focusing on Jakobsen right now. Bersenhagen in a terrible position. He's moved back up into the final 2.5k. We're going to have to sprint early with EBH. Try and put Milano in a decent position. Into the final kilometre, there's a lot of corners, but we're way too far back. Milano going to try and come through right now. But I think the win today will be going to Caleb Ewan, who's just going to finish ahead of Gaviria. Jakobsen in third, I think we'll maybe finish in the top 10. Not the best sprint, we weren't in a good position with Milano. But the big news, is Julian Alaphilippe going to be gaps right here? So a technical finish to the stage today and EBH getting dropped off. Uh, it was Lewis Leon Sanchez's wheel, didn't help at all. Milano seventh, probably the best we could have done today. A bit disappointing to be fair. Anyhow, if we scroll down, you can see Julian Alaphilippe loses three minutes and three seconds. I do not know what quick set we're thinking today. Here we go then into stage three and it's a big GC day already at this Tour de France. Look at some of these climbs today, gonna to be very, very difficult indeed. And Alaphilippe the big favorite and that is no surprise to me. I expect him to bounce back with a bang today. Stage three then getting underway and some very nice plus three days on both Comrade and TJ. Very important, I think that is. Anyhow, we are going to try and go in the break with Sanchez again, and we can get a look at his polka dot jersey, looking very good indeed, if I say so myself. The board is going to try and join him in today's break. So let's attack with Sanchez first, try and follow Langeval. The board can attack as well, maybe follow some of these guys. Let's see if we can get a few riders up the roads. And by the way, so you guys know, I was interested to see where this stage is actually taking place, because it looks quite tropical, I would say, for France and Port Vecchio is actually in Corsica, so that is the current location of this stage. Right, so we've covered the pretty much only flat section of this race, and I'm going to try and take it somewhat steady on these climbs, because I think this first cat is gonna be the big one, 10 points available there, and of course, plenty of points available. Let's try and pace ourselves to start. Okay, so I've managed the tempo pretty nicely. We have five minutes on the peloton, and just 2K to go to this first second cat climb of the day. Of course, many points available, so not too big a deal if we don't take these. Anyhow, the bods can now go 99, try and lead out Sanchez somewhat on to this climb. We'll try and sprint with about 800 to go with Sanchez. Let's go now. Uh, the bod can just follow his Spanish teammate. Let's see if Sanchez can take any of these points. I think we're gonna get second. Um, I believe we got second there, up to eight points now. And so I think actually Manzin did beat us along with Viella, of course. So just one point actually for Sanchez at that climb. So a similar situation as we come to the top of this first cat climb and Viella potentially uh, sensing some weakness in Sanchez and De Bod attacking very early on this climb. I'm not gonna follow him. I'm gonna go 90 with De Bod, try and lead out Sanchez again somewhat. You can see those guys probably very tired right now. We're now going to fly past them with the bods, try and put them in a bit of trouble right now. 1K still to go, you can see we're very low on reds, but I think we've managed this pretty well because I do believe Sanchez can now go up to 99, try and take these points, and maybe the bods can hang on for second place. Can we get a one-two? I think we'll get first and third, but very nicely done there. Sanchez is going to be well in the lead right now. So six riders now at the front together and we are quickly coming into the next climb. As you see, there is a full behind Valgrim, Betio involved. So a pretty big moment right there. I'm trying to grab some water with Milano. Let's see if we can do that on the downhill. Anyhow, just one point available. Let's see if we can take it though with Sanchez. So Debord up to 99 with 1.5k to go. 
I think maybe I can just follow this guy with uh, Luis Leon Sanchez. That should do the job, I believe, into the final 800. Let's try and come past him right now. Do we have the sprint? And I do believe we were just about taking additional points up to 19 now. All right, so here we go. Another attack by Viella this time. And I do get the feeling it's going to be difficult to beat the Italian on this occasion. We will try, though, with Sanchez. Let's try and attack right now. But I don't think we're going to have this one. Uh, Viella has been strong today. Do we have the kick at the end with Sanchez? Going to be close. And no, we don't have that one. That is fine, though. Still well in the lead. So the pace currently very high in both the peloton and the breakaway. Anyhow, we do have a third cat climb coming up. So just two points available, I do believe. The bods try and move to the front, but it's very difficult at the moment with this current tempo. Can we try and take these with Sanchez? Going to be difficult again, though, I do believe. Let's see if Sanchez has the kick right now. Every point counts right here. And can we take one or two? I don't think so. We're going to be third on that occasion still on 19 points. So I think we have now lost Fran Van Tozo from today's break. Anyhow, we do now have a sprint coming up. Let's up this to 99 with the bod. See if we can come to the front. May as well try and take these points with Sanchez right here. Let's sprint right now. Um, and I do believe we will be good enough. No, we're not. Down in third place. Not sure why we're struggling with our sprint at the moment with Sanchez. Anyhow, uh, you can see Milano has now been dropped from the peloton. That is fine. Uh, we won't be going for this intermediate sprint with him. So the pace in the peloton is currently absolutely rapid. Set by Quickstep and UAE on the front. You can see we're getting dropped right now. Let's up this to 80. Try and move up in this group as we come into this climb. Uh, Christoph laying the hammer down on the front, not giving the break a chance right here. So even the mighty Jako Hananen is out the back right now. And just 92 in the peloton coming down though all the time. Riders scattered all across the rows. We need to up these guys to 84. And let's go effort cursor to try and move up in this group because that is proving very difficult right now. We're still out front with the Bods and Sanchez, but just 20 seconds right now. I do want to stay out front until these KOM points, um, but we're going to be caught right here. Let's slow up with these guys and they continue the pace over the top. My words. And at this point with the current tempo, Foss and Boerson Hagen now out the back as well. I do believe it is time to turn our attention to the GC. Just trying to get these guys to the end in the peloton because uh, that is going to be a struggle. So I've just checked who has been dropped and there is a massive surprise. No, it's not Jakob Hananen. If we take a look at the group ahead, Jakob Fuglsang has been dropped for Astana and there's no chance he's coming back in at this point. So I'm attempting to just stay in this group. We're going 78 at the moment. You can see we're falling right out the back. I'm going to have to up this to 84 again. Uh, we're about to lose the bods. Sanchez isn't going to be able to stay here too long. You can see it is big Peter Sagan on the front at the moment. Okay, 5k to go on this climb. We're literally struggling to stay here on 85. We're going to have to go 99 briefly just to bridge that small gap. It's Mulberger on the front right now. And this is a big decision. Do I protect one of these guys? I think for now, we just try and stay here with both comrades and Van Garderen. You can see the likes of Tony Martin, Dan Martin going out the back, uh, Jon Izaguirre. We've got Rui Costa as well. We're going to have to continue to keep this pace high because this is crazy. Okay, so 2k to go. The pace does now slow. Uh, Mulberger is now done. And I think pretty much everyone is now out of domestiques. Let's lower this to maybe 60, 21 riders in the peloton as we crest the highest point remaining in the stage with one more climb to go. Right, so decision time again. 16k to go in this stage. You can see I have Van Garderen in Comrade's wheel. Um, I do believe the finish suits Comrade a bit more, but I do want to keep Van Garderen here for now. I don't want to kind of focus on one of these guys just yet. It would be good to keep them both in the GC battle. Anyhow, let's try and make sure we stay to the front. Right, so we do have attacks. Bargui, Landa, Yates, Alaphilippe, they're all going for it right now. We're going to have to up this to maybe 88 with comrades. I think maybe 85 is okay because they're not really creating any separation just yet on this final climb. But maybe now we're dropping too far back in this group. We'll use our energy gels as well. 
Four and a half K to go on this climb. Mikhail Lanza now on the counter. Pogachar following. We're looking pretty good though with both of these guys. I think we can get over pretty comfortably in this front group with both of them. Lucky we have a plus three day today. Right, so 3k to go and Tade Pogachar has countered and he is the first man to really create some separation on this final climb. Let's come up to 87 with comrades looking pretty good right now. A flasher section coming up as a few guys going out the back. Emric Mass has been dropped, Movistar's GC leader and Van Garderen and Comrade looking pretty good. Let's go up to 92. Maybe I can put in a little attack, you know. Patrick Comrade on the attack for YouTube Pro Cycling and he will crest the top of the climb in first position. Right, so into this downhill, we have about 15 seconds with Comrade. Do we have enough to go 99 to the line? Let's drop this to 85, because we have 20 seconds on the peloton. Could this be the moment? Our first victory at the Tour de France. We're just about holding on with Comrade. Maybe we can even go into yellow. Oh my word, I'm getting far too excited. Maybe up to 99 into the final climb, so we can sprint with Van Garderen as well. But Patrick Comrade wins stage three of the Tour de France. What a moment for the team. And TJ finishes with the other GC guys. What a perfect stage. And dropped today, we have the likes of Emric Mass, De Plus, who has 79 Mountain, Dan Martin, Richie Ports, and of course, Mark Soler as well. If we scroll much further back, he's so far back, Jakob Fuglsang is somewhere in these groups behind. What a moment, guys. Patrick Comrade attacks over the top into the downhill, and he takes 20 seconds on the rest of the guys. You know what that means. We are in yellow, baby. Okay, that was a mental stage. I can't quite believe what I've just seen. Honestly, um, I didn't quite expect it to be so selective, even though there was so much climbing. On stage three, I didn't expect uh, the AI to really go for it, but Emric Mass, of course, Fuglsang getting drops. Really, really tough stage. And to win it with comrades, honestly, I can't believe it. Okay, then, this is a big moment. Clearly, Fuglsang was struggling in the last stage and he has been hit by a virus, so he is pulled out of the tour. So stage four, I think a good chance for the sprinters today. Coming into Bastia, Gaviria, Ewan and Sagan, the favourites. We will, of course, ride for Sebastian Milano. Oh my, look at this. What a beautiful sight. I didn't expect to see this in this race, I will be honest. Uh, but we're seeing already in the first week, Comrade in yellow. Uh, and also Sanchez in polka dot still. Anyhow, there aren't too many points available today. And Sanchez, another minus day. I think I'll keep everyone in the peloton. Okay, so we have had a pretty smart move, I would say, from Hananen and Viela. They have um, attacked after that early break were caught very easily. They now have three and a half minutes and they're picking up a few scrappy points here and there. I don't think they're going to get enough to overtake Sanchez. Uh, we'll see though after the final climb. So Viela over this climb right here, up to 16 points. Hannanen still on six. So Viela has taken all of them so far um, and he's gonna be, I think, one behind Sanchez, assuming he takes that final third cat climb. Okay then, 18K to go in this one. This will be a mass sprint. Uh, Viela and Hannanen caught very easily after that final third cat climb. Uh, Viela did move up to 18 points, but still behind Sanchez. So we hold on to polka dots. Sanchez's job now to try and put Toma, Bersenhagen and Milano in the perfect position. So 10k to go in stage four of the Tour de France. Sanchez can now move up to 85, I think. That should be okay. Uh, but you still have Toma, Bersenhagen and Milano looking pretty good. They have plenty of yellow, I do believe. I have looked at the map and it's pretty straight to the line. There are some small kind of uh, kinks in the roads. It's not completely straight, but... Um, yeah, it shouldn't really cause any issues with the corners. I think Sanchez can now come up to 93. We can use everyone's energy gel. That's the easiest way to do it, I think. Coming now into the final 5k of the stage. So I think Comrades and Van Garderen will be fine. Toma now up to 99, maybe gone slightly early with Toma coming into the final 3k. Uh, can we drop it now? I think it's too late probably. We'll stay like this then. Bersenhagen next to go up to 99. Tomat, a great job. Bersenhagen 
putting Milano in a very good position. We can sprint with 1.7k to go. Milano in a very good position right now into the final kilometer. Let's try and take it in a sprint. Jakobsen looking good. Damar coming late, but I do believe Jakobsen just ahead of Ewan. Damar in third, we get fifth in the end, but very, very close in the final sprint. So we end up with fifth, but that was really close in the end between the top five. EBH got six, but he was about 50 meters by Milano when he crossed the line. So really, really close between the top five. Sadly, not to be for Milano. Right then, stage five. And I do believe this will be the final stage of this episode. And what a crazy start to the tour it has been for the YouTube Pro Cycling team. Let's see if we can get one more stage win. Um, starting in Marseille today, it's a long stage, over 210k. Probably will be a mass sprint. Let's see what Milano can do. Okay, so we are underway for stage five and I do think I will try and go in the breakaway today with Sanchez. Let's attack right now. Um, and mainly the reason is just to try and challenge for that single point. Right, so 2k to go to this first KOM and it does flatten off right here. So really this is just a sprint. So let's try and leave things out from the front if we can with Sanchez. Up to 99 into the final kilometer. Surprise, there's no attacks just yet. Let's go though into the final kilometer. Can we hold this to the line? I don't think so. Nowhere near in the end. Um, and to be honest, I was thinking I'd drop Sanchez back after that climb, but we may as well stay here now. We're in the break. So 100k into the stage, the break of three minutes on the peloton and really can't see any other result right now other than a mass sprint. So I just let Sanchez get caught by the peloton. You can see 33k to go. The break have just over a minute, but yeah, no chance as I expected. Okay, massive moment, 10k to go. I was just about to say we created a very nice lead out, but Milano is down with EBH. They can both continue luckily, uh, but that could well be our sprint over. Okay, what a big moment that is. I did not expect that to happen, of course. Um, but we're going to have to regroup. I don't think Milano's going to be able to get back in here into the front in time. Really doesn't look like it at this point. Let's rethink things. So Milano is now back in the peloton. He's on 85, trying to make his way to the front. Uh, but as you can see, doesn't look like that is going to happen at all. May as well give up on that. I'm following Michael Matthews with Benjamin Toma, who is our emergency sprinter in this one. Uh, we're in a good position into the final 2K. What a miraculous win this would be. Toma, 71 sprints, following Matthews. Gaviria with a very nice lead out. Let's sprint with everyone, but no chance for Toma today. Up the road, Caleb Ewan holding on ahead of Muschietti and Michael Matthews for his second stage win of the race. And for us, Toma will maybe get a top 10. Pretty good result, actually. Um, and of course, we'll stay in yellow. What an unfortunate moment that was to fall. If it was 10k earlier, 20k out, I think would have had enough time to recover. Uh, but Milano just couldn't get to the front of that group. Toma gave it a go, but only ninth on the day. And also 63rd and down lose one and a half minutes today. And included in this group, you can see much further down, Balcom Molima for Trek and Alaphilippe again losing more time at this race. So Molima, who was in the front group on that selective stage three down to 17th, one minute and 47 down. Um, and Alaphilippe, seven minutes down already. But of course, we end the episodes in yellow. Patrick Comrade after that pretty spectacular attack on stage three in the yellow jersey. Van Garderen in sixth as well. So this man, Patrick Comrade, I clearly quite enjoy riding with him after getting second at LBL to Shackman earlier in the season. And now we've got him in the yellow jersey. And so guys, if you've enjoyed this first episode of the Tour de France, definitely drop a like on the video. Tell me what you thought in the comments below and subscribe to my channel if you're new. And I will see you guys in the next one.